Kinds of Kindness from Yorgos Lanthimos. It's an anthology film about three dark tales of manipulation and obsession. This movie is the amalgamation of three different stories, all with different characters, but with the same cast. We've got Jesse Plemons and Emma Stone as the leads, and some of the supporting actors include Willem Dafoe, Hong Chow, and Margaret Qualley. The first story is about a man named Robert whose entire life is ruled by his boss, Raymond. The second is about a cop named Daniel whose wife, Liz, returns home after being lost at sea, but she doesn't seem to be the same person that he remembers. And the third is about a couple of cult members, Emily and Andrew, who are searching for a young woman with supernatural abilities. With how vague these stories are in marketing, I'd like to honor that sentiment and leave the synopsis at that. Each of these stories does have a couple of recurring themes, the main one being meddling. Each story involves some sort of corrupt powers influencing the lives of people in a very sick and twisted manner. With so many strange scenarios like people crying into a pool of water for their entire cult, and trying to insist to your peers that your wife has been replaced, this movie is really eerie and bizarre. Each of the stories have little to no exposition, making the details behind who these characters are and how they've entered some of these situations extremely vague. I think this was really clever though, with how ridiculous some of the subject matter is, it really made the world of this movie feel incredibly perplexing. But it's also pretty funny, the situations that these characters are in and the dialogue are so outlandish, it's just captivating. One of the biggest things that sticks out about this movie is that the acting and dialogue across the board are both really flat and direct. The dialogue sometimes sounds like it was written by a first time writer in a creative writing class. People often sound and act like this. Hello, Josh, and welcome to my home. Thank you for having me over, Josh. You're welcome. Shall I get you something to drink? Yeah, this movie gives off some serious student film vibes, but in a way that was clearly intentional. This contributes to the movie's really eerie tone. Everyone feels like they've just been brainwashed and reprogrammed. For this to actually work, the movie hinges on the fact that viewers recognize these actors and know that they're very capable and talented. Had the cast been a bunch of unknowns, it wouldn't get the same reaction at all. So yeah, the movie is a little bit pretentious for this reason. This seems like a really fun movie to make, but it does feel like Yorgos was more focused on prioritizing fun than he was the viewer's experience, which just doesn't always yield the best results. The subpar acting was actually kind of disappointing. I think I would have enjoyed this a lot more had we gotten actual performances. But the fact that it was three shorts rather than a single feature length story made it palatable. Each time a new story begins, it sort of rekindles your interest and forces you to look past the stiff behavior and just accept it for all its outlandishness. Had this actually just been a feature length film telling only one of these stories, it definitely would have been very exhausting. The cinematography was great. The use of long takes on strange conversations made them feel so much more awkward. And I loved the way that so many shots were framed. They did a really great job making modern imagery look beautiful. There was also like no music throughout the movie with the exception of the occasional creepy piano jingle and ominous choir pieces. This was both eerie and silly because it made the movie feel really unsettling, but sometimes at sort of silly parts, almost like it was a joke. So I loved the anthology aspect of the film. It kind of felt like I binged watched three episodes of television, but in the theater, of course. There's one recurring thing throughout them. I don't want to spoil it, but it's a very small detail that we see in each of them. Otherwise, the stories are not connected at all. I think it would have been cool for them to have some sort of relationship, though. The fact that they were completely different characters played by the same actors was clever, but it made them feel like they were each part of entirely separate worlds. It would have been cool to see them each with a different cast within the same universe, maybe with a couple of recurring characters. But for the most part, I enjoyed this movie for what it was. I really liked the first and third stories, but the second one I wasn't too crazy about. It was the one that stuck out the most because it was a much more familiar premise. The dude's wife goes missing and then comes back a seemingly different person. The other two were just so much more captivating because there was just no way in hell you could predict what was really going on. This movie is rated R, but I do feel obligated to put an extra trigger warning on it for things like animal cruelty and sexual assault and reproductive failure, just because I know that those things are deal breakers for some viewers. It's a funny and bizarre film, but it does get to be really exhausting when everyone seems like they've been hypnotized, especially since the movie was on the longer side. While I did really enjoy the movie's more ridiculous qualities, I'm gonna say that this one was just fine because the things that were disappointing did kind of actually weigh the movie down. This movie is for cinephiles. If you are a self-proclaimed movie buff or a fan of art house films, 
you might enjoy a good portion of this movie. But if you're a pretty casual moviegoer and you only go to the theater a few times a year for popcorn flicks, I can almost guarantee that you will find this movie to be too strange. Thank you for watching this review. If it brought you any value at all, please give it a like. It really does help the channel grow. I'll see you later this week with my review of Maxine.